is Research Computing and Engineering, Episode 4, and today we have a special trait. We have Jeff Squires as a co-host here. You may remember Jeff from the Open MPI Project. Jeff, thanks a lot for helping me out here. Hey, no problem. Glad to help. This okay. is interesting stuff. Yeah, no problem. We actually have something interesting today. We actually have a free implementation of the Google file system and Google MapReduce available from Apache. It's called Hadoop, and we have one of the main developers that... Um, with us today, and this is a quite a bit different than we've ever looked at before, Jeff. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a little different than the you know traditional HPC, and you know as you know I'm on the Open MPI uh, project, and so I kind of do what's quote unquote traditional HPC, you know where people do parallel programming and whatnot. But you know data mining, and I think some of the things that Christoph is going to talk to us about today is is also a very exciting field and and uh, very difficult technologically to do. So uh, I'm interested to very much to hear what he says and how they work and how the technology works and all this kind of stuff. Okay, well that's cool. Let's go ahead and um, go ahead and have uh, Christoph get on the line. Christoph? Hey there. Uh, good to talk to you, Brock. Jeff? No problem. Thanks for coming. No, not, not, a, not a problem. First off, uh, Hadoop, is it a file system? Is it an application I'm, well, I'm actually, Brock, let me ask something. Let me let me ask something before this, Brock. How, how do you pronounce Hadoop? Is it Hadoop? Hey, Doop? Hadoop? You know, <laughs> what, what's the right way? It depends on how, who you talk to. Uh, Hadoop is a very common pronunciation. Hadoop is what the project founder calls it, and that's what his son says. And Hadoop is actually named after his son's uh, yellow stuffed elephant. So I would I would argue that the way that uh, Doug Cutting's son uh, says it, Hadoop, uh, might take more. Uh, uh, more credit than than one of any of us geeks call it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll try to remember that throughout here, but uh, don't shoot me if I get it wrong. <laughs> that also explains the logo. That explains the elephant. <laughs> it does. It does. Okay, cool. So let's let's jump right in. Um, Hadoop. What is it? Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> It depends on what you look at this for. Hadoop itself is an Apache sub-project. I mean, it's an Apache top-level project. And there are a couple sort of very key sub-projects that are, that are relevant. Uh, there's the Hadoop core. And I think that's what people generally mean when they refer to Hadoop by itself. And Hadoop core is the combination of the Hadoop distributed file system and the Hadoop MapReduce processing engine. So between these two core components, you get a very large-scale distributed storage system and a very large-scale distributing processing framework. So one of the things that we jokingly refer to as Hadoop is it's a gaping maw of bits, meaning you can dump huge volumes of any type of data into the file system and have it store that data reliably. It handles fault tolerance. You don't have to worry about any of this. And then MapReduce is a processing framework that allows you to write relatively simple code to process this data at scale. And the MapReduce system takes care of scheduling each of your jobs, each component of your computation, to run as local to the data as possible. So in a very common case, uh, you're processing the data on the same machine that is physically hosting the data and you're only sort of using the network for the aggregation and the summaries. Okay, now one, one thing I, I noticed there in your description, you said you can dump any type of data into this. Now, is this modeled after a, a traditional file system? So when you say any type of data, you mean just files, or are there different ways of storing this? How, how does this work? What yeah. do you mean by that? Yeah, so, um, I mean, how do HDFS is a file system, and the difference between the Hadoop file system and a traditional file system like X2, X3, you know, what, any others is Hadoop is optimized for extremely large files. Um, it's optimized for extremely large files that have the characteristic that they tend to be um, write once or append only. Uh, and with these types of files, it excels at streaming reads and writes. It's very performant in that regard. What it does a horrible job of is storing lots of files that you want to access randomly. So it's like a file system in the sense that you can store any type of data you want, structured, unstructured, it doesn't care. It's a, it's a block file system. Uh, what's different about a traditional file system is it's highly optimized to work with 
very large files where the primary access mode is streaming reads and streaming writes. So when using this file system, do you actually have to format like your entire cluster HDFS or does it sit on top of you know a block? Yeah, I mean- so the way the way this works in practice is you bring up, you know, you deploy Hadoop to your cluster. Uh, you bring up the there's two components basically to the file system. There's the name node, which manages all of the metadata for your file system. You might call that your master. And then there are an arbitrary number of data nodes. And for a small cluster, this might be five or six. For a large cluster, this might be 500 or 600 or, you know, 2,000. Uh, and what these data nodes do is is they just store blocks. So the formatting, so to speak, when you first bring a cluster up, you, you do do something called formatting, which is initializing the metadata on the master to a sort of clean known state. Um, what the master then does primarily is keeps a mapping of files to the blocks and their and their uh, their data servers. So, Christoph, what you just described there uh, sounds to me like uh, what I would consider, and I'm I'm kind of a newbie. I'm not a file system guy. It sounds like a parallel file system where you have you know you're spreading the data across multiple servers, um, so you can have clients talking directly to you know multiple servers, not just one server like a traditional NFS kind of model. How is how is Hadoop different than that? How is uh, I'm sorry, I think it's HDFS is different than that, right? Yeah. So. The, the real sort of defining characteristics of HDFS is the type of file and the type of operation that it's optimized for. Uh, it's, it, it performs much better with, as I said, these streaming reams and writes and working with very large files. Um, gotcha. gotcha. And, and that is the fundamental difference is, you know, you can't, there's nothing to stop you from storing a small file in HDFS, but the block size is 64 megs. Ah, so, that's big. It's big. Um, But when you're working with, you know, terabytes of data, that's actually a very reasonable block size. Um, Because the common case, you got to think about what the common case is. So let's walk through a very common case uh, usage of Hadoop. So say you have a web crawl going on and you've got sort of, you know, lots of, you know, workers crawling the web and, and dumping their results out. All right. So each of these might open a file and just pour all of the data that it sucks across the network into that file. And then when you finish this process, maybe you'll have a couple terabytes of data spread over uh, you know, a couple very large files. Then what you'll want to do is you want to index this data and process it for the web. So what that would look like is you create a MapReduce job to do your indexing. And the first step of that you know, index might be to you know, build a hit list or something like that, where you take each word occurrence and, and map it to the documents that it occurs in. So you would create a MapReduce job that what what will happen then is your data will get broken into chunks on the order of the size of your blocks. So maybe 64 to 128 megs, depending on how you configure your cluster. And then each node will process the data blocks that it has using this same map, this code from the map phase of the MapReduce. And what allows MapReduce to work so well is there's no shared state between the compute nodes. So each compute node is able to look at its data and process it independently of any other uh, data on the cluster. So when a task fails, for example, this is relatively trivial to you just rerun the task. You don't have to worry about there being any shared state. The only synchronization point in the process is in the reduce phase. So what happens in the map phase, you, inter- you emit as many as you want arbitrary key value pairs. That in the hey, Christoph, let, me, let me ask you. I'm sorry. Let me interrupt and ask you about one thing. So, so I'm in the, the parallel computing field, and one of the big things we are concerned about is the overlap of data. That you know, for me to do some kind of local computation, I need my data and a little bit of overlap of what my neighbors have. Is this something that's that's also doable in the in the Hadoop kind of space, or is that just not really an issue because you're doing different kinds of computations that are are well, fully local? So, there's nothing to stop you from accessing data on a neighbor, so to speak. You just need to change the way that you think about it. So what I was saying is the only sort of synchronization point that you have in a MapReduce, com- uh, a MapReduce computation is how you move between a map and a re-